Marty Schwartz here from GuitarJams.com. I'm going to bring you a theory style lesson for you soloists out there. Uh, real quick, I have a, a, a sale going on on my theory DVD set, and I'm going to pick three comments from this video to win that set for free. You can actually see that set in that link right down there. You can see everything that you could possibly win by leaving a comment of which I'll pick three of to win, and then private message you and get your details and all that stuff. Anyway, I put a question up on Facebook asking, well, what are the theory questions that are kind of driving you mad at the moment? And by far the most popular one was modal questions. I know a lot of you guys are doing guitar solos out there, trying to get fancier. I know in my mind when I was learning, I thought if I just knew the modes, then I'd be the most amazing guitar player ever. And then I kind of memorized them and realized, oh boy, that wasn't the case. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to combine the most popular questions on that Facebook uh, you know, topic, which was modes, and then there was other questions about uh, arpeggios, and then like sweep arpeggios. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the, the mode that we use in rock and blues the most, which is called uh, mixolydian. So I took something that's in G mixolydian, I took an arpeggio that's from that mode, and then I s did a sweep with that. So we're combining like some of the most popular questions together. I'm going to zoom in on the guitar and uh, kind of try and break it down just in my own words. Obviously, you can't unlock the mysteries of music theory in a 10-minute lesson. The DVD set helps with that. But, uh, but hopefully, you know, we, we just shine a little light on one of the many, many endless topics on this stuff. All right? So let's zoom in and break it down. Here we go. All right, people, the info is going to come fast and furious. Um, one of the things about modes that's kind of... It's simple and complicated at the same time. Because ultimately, if you know your major key, which like if you were learning saxophone or piano, that'd be like the first thing that you would build as your foundation, which we don't really do on guitar because we just start playing songs that are fun. And that's good. But if you understand the, the major scale and the chords that are in that key, that's really the... the the key to unlocking the modes. It's all in that DVD set, and I walk people through it very simply. But let me just give you this example right now, and we're going to do an arpeggio, a sweep arpeggio, and it's a modal thing. All right, I was playing a G7 kind of groove, right? Happens all the time. Now, on guitar, a lot of times we could just go into the blue scale. But if you wanted to do, and we like it, we like it, it's good. But if we want to do a modal thing, if we want to get fancy and expensive, uh, a seven chord fits in the mode called mixolydian, G mixolydian. So without even understanding any theory, you could be like, oh, a seven chord, I can plug in the scale. I don't know why it works, but this guy on the internet told me for free how to do it. And it was uh, this thing. Three five, two three five, two three five, two four five, three five six, three five. And I'm playing that over G seven, but it really is the exact same notes as the C major scale, which is the first thing that almost everyone learns on an instrument except for a guitar. 
Now, what makes this different than C major scale? Well, really, just what I'm thinking of as the home note and what I'm playing it over. But if I played this G mixolydian and I found my C note, which happens to be right here on the third fret of the A, and then it happens again on the fifth fret of the G, if I played what I taught you as G mixolydian, but I started and ended on the C note, it's that Do, Re, Mi scale. So the term mode, just like if you really were trying to define the term mode, it's like a different function of something else. So if you understood the major scale and the chords that go with the major scale, then from there you can learn how to plug that same stuff in with a different root. So what, what the modes are is taking the major scale, the Do, Re, Mi, and each note of it, if you think of that as home bass and play it over that tonality, now you're playing a different function of the major scale or a different mode. So G mixolydian is all the same notes of the C major scale. G mixolydian is called the fifth mode of the C major scale. So if you knew the C major scale up and down the whole neck, you actually know the G mixolydian up and down the whole neck as well. They're the exact same thing, except G mixolydian is playing that C major scale with the G note as the home bass over a G7 chord. Also, the seven chord is always that mixolydian mode of a major scale as well. If none of that made sense, it's okay. It takes a while to digest it, but now you can just look at it, look at it like this. Hey, when you got a seven chord, you can do some of these tricks I'm about to show you instead of your blues scale, or you can combine it with the blues scale, or say, forget it, just play the blues scale the whole time. There's plenty of rock stars that never did any modes really on purpose, just played that blues scale. So there's a lot going for you here, but now we're going to enter the portion of the lesson where I'm going to show you a modal technique that is in mixolydian, and we're in G mixolydian. So if you were in C mixolydian, you'd just shift this trick up there and it would work there. So this is a real practical kind of use because it's a seven chord, which is bluesy, Rock and roll and blues, you know, is kind of what I like to do the most. And this can be used right in it. Now, uh, when I talk about the major scale and chords and keys and all that, like I said, G mixolydian comes from the key of C major. The key of C major has six chords that are used in that key all the time. Uh, it would be C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G7 or G major, but we'll call it G7, A minor, and then that's kind of what we deal with. So any arpeggio of any of those chords I just said will work over G7. The two that I'm going to talk about are playing a D minor arpeggio and an E minor arpeggio over G7, and you get cool sounds out of it. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the arpeggios. And just remember, if this is over your head theory-wise, just know, boom, if I'm in my pentatonic, but it's like a seven chord, these tricks are going to work. And it looks like this. So if you've got, uh, you know, that's your kind of root foundation, you've got an arpeggio right here based on this minor chord. Okay? So you have a G7. So here are the two arpeggios I'm going to actually show you now. The one is the D minor seven arpeggio and it's right here and we're playing G mixolydian we always want to kind of know where our G roots are uh, that's in blues or modal stuff so we've got another G root right here which is the eighth fret of the B string okay so you can kind of look at that BB box so you're always going to have this minor thing right here. D minor arpeggio is always in G mixolydian. And then a whole step up is E minor arpeggio. That's always in there as well. 
So if you're playing this seven chord, you always have you always have these two right there. Now if you play the notes one at a time, that's an arpeggio. So it'd be seven, six, five, and then we're gonna get our pinky up to the eight on the high E. And the exact same thing up a whole step. Backwards. about just uh, two notes of each. Or D minor seven and E minor seven. If you know other arpeggios for the minor seven, you can plug them in as well, depending on how advanced you are. But just know, if it's totally over your head theoretically, if you're jamming in G7, you can do the G blues scale. G mixolydian is like theoretically more correct. I like to combine the blue scale with that. Okay, D minor arpeggio. Minor seven arpeggio. Now to combine them and make them musical, they both kind of have a suspended sound, so they want to resolve to G. So you can build lines off of the arpeggios, but then kind of resolve your lick to a note that's strong in that G7 chord. Here we go. That's a G note. Another thing like the D uh, minor 7 arpeggio and then kind of going down the blues scale from there. So I'm going to take my index right there on the 6th fret and hammer to the 7 which is that major 7. So. As far as the sweep, our the sweep arpeggio aspect of it, you can form the chord, and we and it's also known as a rake. You drag your pick over the strings. That time, 
each drum, uh, each note was still ringing out. And to do a good sweep arpeggio, we don't want that. We want right after we hit the note, we relax that finger. And I do it by literally taking the finger off. And my right hand's kind of muting across. There's a real trick to getting the, ri the, the rhythm right of pulling the fingers off with the drag across. And you can just start by dragging it across without worrying about the pressure of taking the hand off. And I tend to hammer that last note. it the other way. It's all about, dra I kind of roll my pick over and I'm really real crispy muting. Maybe not, but hopefully there's a practical thing that you can use in there, even if you didn't understand it. Remember, I'm picking three comments that are going to win that set down there. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and the support. And uh, we'll see you in another video real soon, I promise. See you later. <laughs>